bevo.com. So with uh, the economy as it is and with uh, price comparative shopping going on, is price going to become the king of the peas? Yeah, I, I think during hard times, uh, price is, is one that you have to handle especially well. Um, and I would say this to companies, um, many of them don't want to initiate a price cut, right? Because uh, they know that if they initiate it, uh, the competitors are going to match them with a price cut. So maybe for a little period, no one's cutting the price. For example, Starbucks is still 3 or $4 a cup of coffee. Uh, on the other hand, it may be smarter to um, create a lower price version for people who want to save a little money and yet patronize that organization. For example, McDonald's, even before this, uh, this um, downdraft, uh, started to put into its menu uh, smaller priced items. Uh, I know in the United States they're sort of like a taco something. It's about half the price of a hamburger. It's quite filling. And uh, that's smart. That's smart. because Now, the criticism of things like that is, well, what you've done is you've cannibalized the, the higher margin products. I mean, you've offered something lower, and uh, now, now uh, how do you get back to when times get better to getting people to buy the more expensive things? But in general, I think there are two ways to manage the price um, retaliation or, or, or pressure. One is to, uh, as I said, add a lower item in your offering. Um, and then the other is to not change your price, but add value. Um, uh, Mr. Customer, we know that it's um, hard to, nowadays uh, to, to, to pay for everything uh, at the rates they, they were selling for, but um, we're going to absorb the shipping expense on the refrigerator. Uh, usually that would be added to your bill. Uh, we're going to uh, have someone come and service the machine at our expense. So instead of lowering your price, you, you raise your costs a little bit, but it's better margin-wise to do it that way. We call that adding value instead of lowering price. That's a great strategy, isn't it? Because we interviewed Andy Coslett, the CEO of Intercontinental Hotels, uh, not long ago. And he was saying that he's got sort of seven brands in all segments of the market. So if during economic downturn people decide to go for a less prestigious brand, they can do, but he's got that covered. I like that strategy. I've always advocated it. Namely, I say you should have uh, three versions of your product, uh, good, uh, better, and best. Um, those would be called price points. And uh, some people who are cynical will say, well, it's really poor, fair, and good. But that's a matter of words. But the point is um, that you don't know at what stage you'll be in, in the business cycle. And to have multiple levels of offerings uh, makes a lot of sense. Now, the firms that may not get into that are what we call the highly niched firms who um, dominate a uh, very uh, specialized part of the marketplace. We sometimes call them hidden champions. Um, they, they're very profitable. They're usually a business-to-business -business company selling a component that goes into a braking system. It's, it's like the, the guys who sell, sell the shoelaces for the shoes, you know. Uh, there aren't too many competing for that, maybe. And uh, so Hidden Champions, uh, they're more secure during downdrafts because they are very close to their customers and they do the best they can for their customers and, and they remain leaders and profitable leaders at that. Bevo.com